Blake's. Like, hey, Scoob, did you hear Nikki Blake is hosting a Scooby-Doo panel? No. Yeah. Like on today's Scooby-Doo episode, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy meet Nikki Blake. Yeah, in a Scooby panel. <laughs> like, we need to get this puppy started. Yeah, okay. Nikki Blake, take it away, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Welcome to the Scooby panel. I'm your host, Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com, and today we are talking about the food from Laugh Olympics. Before we begin, I'll have everyone introduce themselves, and Wendy, we'll start with you. Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Bridge. I've been collecting Scooby for over 30 years, and I'm a commission artist, and on occasion, I like to do some Scooby fan art, too. Joel? Hey there, I'm Joel from the YouTube channel Planet Scooby. So we are talking about the food from Laugh Olympics, and it was a little disappointing. I think it was disappointing. It was weird, a very weird use of food in this series, not like food to eat, but food to do things with, or just references to food. So it was kind of odd. Uh, so we'll start with the foods in the episodes. And basically, the foods that they got to eat were very, very few. Pixie and Dixie got to eat cheese. Scooby Dum's camel got to eat a kookaberry bush, which I guess is a real berry. I don't know. I don't know. Not where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant got to drink from a peanut butter fountain. And besides that, we see things in the background, like foods and things like that cups a lot of a lot of cups filled with some mysterious liquid um the only other use of food was really foods that they were using to um to cause the other teams to not be able to cross the finish line first so as far as foods that they ate what are your thoughts on those wendy yeah, they really didn't eat much. Although I guess if you think about it, it is a show about them competing in athletic games. So I suppose that it makes sense that they wouldn't be eating like anything. Um, it was interesting though, because I didn't realize until I was watching a few of the episodes and I was reading all of your notes and just looking at how they actually were using the food I do feel like a lot of Hanna-Barbera shows utilize food in the cartoon for something. Just not just Scooby. I mean, like all of them. And it wasn't something that I consciously thought of before. So then when I was thinking about Laugh Olympics, I thought, oh, well, maybe they could have added. They could have added a little bit more of an eating element. Like, why wasn't there a game where they had to eat stuff? Right. Right. That, I think, is where they kind of maybe, like, missed a really cool opportunity because that would have made a lot of sense. Um, apart from that, I get it. They're not eating very, very many things. But I think that that was, that was the missed opportunity. There should have been some kind of Olympic sport where they had to eat something. They missed, even, out. They missed out on that. Even, like, a bake-off or, yeah. or a, a cooking competition, something. But, yeah. For the amount of food that they had that they didn't use as food, they could have put some of that to good use. Yeah, I agree. Joel, what are your thoughts on the food as food in the episodes? Yeah, not much to add. I thought given the different locations, they could have been a little more creative with the foods too. There's some references like Morocco, couscous, a few others, but you know, they're in Egypt, they're in they're in Quebec and they just say I'm gonna eat Quebec or something like yeah, it was weird <laughs> weird yeah Captain caveman was gonna eat Quebec yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do like that idea of um like a food eating contest and that was kind of big in the 70s I think and yeah 50s 60s like pie eating contests that was big and watermelon slices and all sorts of things hot dogs but yeah none of that in Laugh Olympics sadness yeah, definitely a missed opportunity there. That, that could have been so much fun. I mean, they could have yeah. done like a a pizza competition at some point, you know, anything. It would have been so cool. So they did use a lot of food. 
as objects instead of food. Um, so Scooby and Shaggy, when they built the sand castle, they built it with coconuts mm -hmm. and then put the sand over the coconuts and somehow it turned into a, an Italian pizzeria and they were able to get inside of it, even though the coconuts were completely stacked up when you first saw it. I, I'm not, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> They used foods like bananas, couscous, molasses, um, things like that to put on the road so that the other racers would slide on them. They used chewing gum a couple times too. Um, once to get Yogi's, I think Yogi's donkey got stuck in gum. Mm -hmm. And then the other time was to help, Dynamut helped the Blue Falcon to be able to fly, I think, with the gum. He blew a bubble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very, very weird how they use the food. What are your thoughts on just how they use the food, Joel? Yeah, it was a bit weird, I guess. When you're a kid, though, it's funny, like the whole banana peel slipping, and they just kind of went on further from that. And I'm sure, like, I used to use peanut butter to play pranks on people and stuff, and they used peanut butter in one of those scenes where it turns into peanut brittle or something like like the quicksand turned out to be peanut butter and when the water hit it it turned out to be peanut brittle so I, I, water hit it it turned into peanut brittle and i'm just like is that how peanut butter works like, i don't think so i don't think so <laughs> yeah it was weird but i guess if you're a kid it's kind of fun and it's like 70s kind of humor too i think Nowadays, we're a little more knowledgeable about food and more food centric. But back in the 70s, as a kid, you just were, wanted your cereal in the morning. And I guess maybe like my hometown in the 70s, there was like one restaurant. Now, when I visit it, there's everything, everything possible. I'm babbling. Wendy. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I kind of, the more I thought about it, and then when I actually sat down and pulled up some of the clips to watch them, the more that the way that they used the food grew on me. I don't know if it's, it's really the right way to say that it was used as like a plot device, but they were utilizing the food like as weaponry, as tools. Um, I love the idea of like shooting the olives out as just a new way of making the roadway slick. I mean, they at least put some thought into what they were doing when they were writing these different little skits and stuff. They didn't just do the same shtick over and over again. Yeah, there's a couple where they did it twice, like, you know, like you say about the, the gum and everything. Um, but by and large, I thought that was pretty creative use of different types of food to get the job done. Now, obviously, it's always the really rottens who are doing this you know, uh, the mush melons, I don't know why, but that was like a particular favorite for me. I guess it's just like the alliteration on that that is just kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was kind of a nice way of including food in a series that kind of makes sense to not have them eating too much and just using it in a really creative way. I will admit that at the end where there's one episode where Mildew Wolf gets out of a giant banana peel. That was weird. There was something when I read your note about that, I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of fun. And then I watched it and I was like, it's just something weird. It just, I don't know. It was, it was weird. I, in theory, it sounded fine. It was weird when they did it. So sometimes it was like, what are you, what are you guys doing? But for the most part, I appreciated the creativity involved in finding ways of using food to trip up all of the other people involved in the race. Cause that's the whole point of the really rottens. What crazy shenanigans can we get into to make it so that we're going to win and you're going to lose. And the food gets used a lot for that. And in a really fun kind of way and interesting way. The other one that I thought was really weird and I had to think about it for a while was they're trying to, to trap a leprechaun 
to like steal his gold or borrow his gold and they're like bribing him with shamrock juice and my first instinct was like what the heck is shamrock juice what and and i'm thinking i'm thinking way too advanced honestly in the, initially and then i watched the clip and it's basically it's just like a jug and it has this like green coming off of it like scent that the leprechaun likes and then he starts talking about oh me shamrocks i love me shamrocks whatever whatever he was saying and i was like oh it's just shamrocks pressed into juice it's not some fancy drink then i was disappointed i'm not gonna lie i was for some reason i had like the shamrock shake from mcdonald's in my head even though i've never had one of those but i imagine it in my head sometimes I thought maybe that's what they were trying to bribe the leprechaun with. And I was like, oh, no, it's just literally shamrock juice. So that was also kind of weird, but also kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. If, if I was watching that as a kid, I think I would enjoy that. I'm not sure. What do we think the target demographic was for that series? I can't decide. I was thinking maybe like five to seven. Okay. Because I feel like older than that they're not really going to be so interested in it okay see for some reason i was thinking older than that but then none of it actually makes sense so i'm not i'm not sure what because there's something to me there's something just a little bit grown up about laugh olympics maybe it's because there isn't a lot of eating of the food and it's more like it's not serious but competing in something seems like a more serious thing you know even though they've got all these jokes involved in it but yeah I don't know I don't know it's 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 a very odd series I have to admit I kind of appreciate it more after watching it thinking food in my mind I don't know why but there was something just like the way that they use the food I was like oh someone was someone was thinking with that and I appreciate that that was like kind of a step up because I guess it's kind of in a way like a bit of a wacky races type type series and I wasn't a series that I watched a lot and I wasn't super interested in it I kind of think that Laugh Olympics maybe pulled it off a little bit better but that just might be because of the fact that they had Scooby and Yogi Bear and like some bigger names in it but but yeah, I mean, props to them. I think for what they did do with the food, I thought it was pretty cool. So what age demographic do you think it was for? My brothers watched it and they're quite older than me and they would probably be somewhere between 11 and 15. Hmm. Like a lot of jock kids liked it, like sports. Yeah. And you kind of get interested in sports like grade four to grade 7ish grade 8 yeah i i watched it with my brothers i wasn't that into it i wanted the older scooby but i still watched it and enjoyed it at the time cuz i was i think i was around when that must have, i must have been around when that premiered or was reruns i i don't know <laughs> dark ages <laughs> <laughs> They almost named more characters after food than the food that they physically ate. Because there was Taffy, Grape Ape, Huckleberry Hound, the, and the Great Fondue. And then I included Jellystone because, you know, jelly. Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. Even though Fondue is spelled differently, I still counted it because it sounds the same. So. It does, yep. Yeah, so I thought it was kind of cool that they have food names for the characters, and I, I know I don't think I ever really realized that their names were food names until right. Laugh Olympics when I was researching to do this, and then I'm like, wait, Grape Ape, hey, <laughs> yeah, and he's purple, yeah, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm like, are Huckleberries blue? I don't know what a Huckleberry is. Is that a real thing? It's a it's real, a real thing. thing. It's similar right. to a blueberry, but not a blueberry. But I don't remember if they're blue. Yeah, like I wonder if that's why he's a blue color. Because I, I didn't, grow in your didn't area notice too, that too. either. Yeah. I think they grow in your area too. Really? Oh boy. Okay, I'm going to have to do some research on this. Because so they grow here and they grow in Nova Scotia, like everywhere. Okay. It's okay, really. We'll have to get into this. They're delicious, but they're they stain. You have some huckleberry pie, your teeth are just purple. 
after. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also with the shamrock shake. When I was a kid, there was a rumor, or I don't know if it's a fact, that if you had green eyes, you get like a free shamrock shake every St. Patrick's Day. Really? What? So I don't know if you ever heard that or if it's true. If anyone's no. watching, let me know. Yeah, I want to know that for sure. That's a friend who always told me, I'm going to McDonald's today. I have green eyes. I'm like, St. Patrick's Day, green eyes. Okay, good. I don't know if he's lying <laughs> or... That's interesting. I've never had a shamrock shake, so I, I have never actually heard that. Interesting, yeah. Hmm. Well, now I think everyone that has green eyes needs to hit up McDonald's. Yeah. Absolutely. St. Patrick's Day and let us know if you get a free shamrock shake. Yep. Coming up, or maybe... I don't know when this is going to air. <laughs> I don't know when St. Patrick's Day is. I know it's in March. <laughs> a couple other weird things with food. Like, they ate things that weren't food. Like, Mildew ate his hat. Mm. And Jabberjaw ate a net. I mean, why are they eating things that aren't food? Yeah. That's weird. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Well, they eat my hat's like a common gag right like i think it comes from the depression era it is but he actually ate it i mean granted he is a cartoon character yeah well, i've seen a, i've seen a few cartoons where people have eaten their hat they get it like the old salt and pepper shaker and they start he did Pardon. mention that he needed to have salt to make his hat taste better so. yeah there's probably some like old comic routine that that's based off of that we're just yeah. too young to know yeah <laughs> it's possible and when you brought up mildew in the banana costume i thought it was fitting for him considering at one point he was in a padded room in a straight jacket that's true it's true so yeah it poor mildew sense that he was in yeah. the banana costume i worry about him <laughs> of any cartoon character ever i love him but i'm also like are you okay like, maybe you do need to be in that giant banana and just over there. He was not yourself. okay in Laugh Olympics. I no, mean, he really he wasn't. He started off okay. And then every episode, you could see he was just getting worse and worse and worse. And then True. eventually he was in that banana costume. And yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Mildew. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Scooby Snacks. Scooby Snacks were in two episodes. Florida and China. Shaggy attached a brown box that said Scooby Snacks, S-N-A-C-K-S, -S, to a fishing line, held it in front of Scooby to make him go faster. And then in Canada and Warsaw, Poland, he held what looked like a ball of cheese or he put a ball, what looked like a ball of cheese on a line and did the same thing, holding it in front of Scooby. And then Scooby kept making that, like, um, sound, like, licking his lips or something. I forget exactly what the sound was. And... <laughs> but that was it. That was it for Scooby Snacks. They could have done so much more. Wendy, what are your thoughts on the lack of Scooby Snacks? Actually, I'm kind of I'm kind of pleasantly surprised that they put them in at all, given the lack of food just in general for that series. And even learning previously that Scooby Snacks are not as prevalent in other series as we think they are. So I am kind of pleasantly surprised that they did make like two small little cameo appearances. Still drives me crazy, though, that they're not consistent with what they look like. Because even that one where Shaggy's dangling it and it completely looks like a piece of yellow cheese and then it morphs as <laughs> Scooby is moving and it turns into like a round little biscuit, you know? Um, so that was a little bit frustrating. So I'm like, make up your mind. What 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 are they? What does it look like? Uh, it changed size while Scooby was being prodded by it. So so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it did make an appearance, but I petitioned that we hold a poll or, or have a referendum or something and be like, what are Scooby snacks? What do they look like? 
And that is what we're going to stick to. I think that I think we need that. It's the one consistency problem that, that I have with Scooby. I want the snacks to be the same or we need to establish that there are different versions of the snack. But those also need to be consistent within whatever world they're in. So, yeah. It is amazing how not consistent they are even within the same series like even the box could be totally different in the series yeah joel what are your thoughts on the scooby snacks yeah i was happy to it made it into the series and it would have been cool to see a little bit more i don't know if i like that was used to like motivate scooby in that manner like i think he should have got the snacks first Good point. I find it a little insulting where you're like to Scooby. Like they always give it to him first as a you know incentive. And now Shaggy's kind of treating him like a farm animal. I'm thinking like donkey with the carrot and stick. You know maybe it's just I'm reading too much into it and being silly. But um, I'm just feel bad for Scooby. I guess it was Once. really weird to have him dangling them in front of him. Yeah, like you said, like. I kept thinking of a horse, yeah, and a carrot, and yeah. I was like, that's not quite what you should be doing with Scooby. No, Scooby's an equal. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was nice that they it was an appearance. So. Yeah, and there was a point where somebody mentioned the word cake to Scooby Dumb, and he said he would rather have a bone. This is for the whole cake, but first... Cake? I'd rather have a bone. Let's look at this actor. Sounds like Scooby Dumb. Why would you choose a bone over cake? Because he's living up to his name. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why. Because only someone who was dumb would choose a bone over cake. <laughs> Scooby would never. Scooby would never know. And no. he would be very upset with Scooby Dumb knowing that he, he chose yeah. a bone over cake. Yep. Oh, do you guys have any final thoughts on food in Laugh Olympics? Joel? I was just thinking of another missed opportunity. Like if they, I guess not missed, but if they redid it now, think of the sponsorship things they could do for food, like yeah. energy drinks and protein bars and whatever else. There should have been like signs of different food things. Like you see that with you, the watch. Oh, actually, I don't really watch the Olympics, but I imagine there's lots of like advertising for food and whatnot. Sports drinks, Gatorade, you know. That's all I could come up with for, for a thought. I was a little surprised, like because it was sports events, that they weren't eating things like that or or drinking things yeah. in between to kind of keep up their strength. And then the audience, when they showed the audience. You never saw a tent with food. You never saw somebody in the audience holding like a hot dog or anything, which is weird because they would have that at a sports event. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wendy, your final thoughts? I am totally on board with what Joel just said. I feel like if they were going to remake any Scooby series, this would be the only one I could get behind because I feel like it has the least... They would have the hardest time messing it up or like wrecking the characters that were involved. You know what I mean? Because I feel like this is a very specific kind of genre for them. And there's very little that they could like pile onto the characters to like change them. And there is like a ton of potential to make it like a food centric thing with like Joel said, with a bunch of advertising and then like real sponsorship and stuff too which would make it like very popular and and uh cost worthy um but yeah something joel said earlier too that wow why did they not do this the fact that they're going all over the world what a perfect time to do a better job of showcasing the different foods from those places like that would have been really really cool i i, I guess it really is because like Scooby's in the series and they're hanging it on his name and everything, but it's not really a Scooby series at the end of the day. It's just a Hanna-Barbera show. So I guess maybe that's the real reason that they didn't double down on the food kind of thing, where if it was just a, a straight Scooby one, 
maybe they would have pushed that a little bit more. But yeah, there's a ton of potential there to like really push the food stuff over the top. And I feel like it would work for all of those characters, not just Scooby, that that would have been really, really cool. Because yeah, when they were in Canada, I was waiting. I'm like, where's the Putin reference? Why is this not happening? Because that, that was what I wanted to hear. I wanted to see them with a plate of like animated Putin that now I really, really, really want to see that for some reason. There should have been guys barbecuing in the background. I think that would have really worked well. So yeah, bring back Laugh Olympics, but let's like give it a food theme. If not directly, then indirectly, because it would totally work. Yeah, it would definitely work for the series. And yeah, they could do so much with it now. Like Joel said, sponsorships and yeah. Definitely, you have to have food at least available for the audience that's watching. I mean, these people are starving. Yeah. You're sitting here in all kinds of weather watching all these things, and they're hungry. They need food. We were almost going to have to taste test something, but then I realized that it was used as fuel and not food, and I was so happy because yeah. the only thing that we could really possibly taste test would be when Dread Baron mentioned the mixture of red pepper, garbanzos, onions, and Tabasco sauce. Red pepper, a sack of garbanzos, onions, Tabasco sauce. And when I heard him say that, I was like, oh no, I'm going to have heartburn for a year. It's going to make me sick. Like, this is not good. And then when he poured it into his scooter, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't have to eat it, we don't either. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So that means we have nothing to taste test, and that means we're going to wrap things up. Before we do, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Wendy, we'll start with you. On Instagram, I'm at Wendy Bridge. Twitter X is Wendy Loves Jesus, and my blog is Wendy Loves Jesus. Joel, you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Planet Scooby. And you can find all my links on scoobyaddicts.com. Thank you for joining us for another Scooby panel. Thank you for tuning in to another Scooby panel. I'm Nikki Blake from scoobyaddicts.com. If you like these panels, please subscribe to my channel for more great discussions. A huge shout out to our patrons, Julie Rosen, Ross from scoobyfan.net, Tagus, Elizabeth Maloney, and Mindy. If you would like to support the Scooby panel, please go to patreon.com slash scoobyaddicts. A very special thank you to artist, blogger, and Scooby collector Wendy Bridge and Joel from Planet Scooby. Scooby panel is available in podcast form on most podcast platforms or as a web series on YouTube. You can find Scooby panel on Instagram, Facebook, and X as at Scooby panel. Scooby and Shaggy were voiced by Scott Innes. Check out Scott's website, onescottshop.com. Scooby Addicts artwork by Will Davenport. Video editing by Nikki Blake. Music composed and performed by Bovine Nightmares. Please join us next time for another Scooby panel.